back. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report on the phone. Sam Bagenstos is the professor of law at University of Michigan and a writer of the piece in Prospect.org, Civil Rights Deja Vu, Only Worse. Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. So let's start with uh, just your background, because the the dynamic that you describe broadly in the piece, and then I want to get to the specifics, but the dynamic you, you um, describe broadly is um, one that during the Bush administration, I was constantly, you know, w- was a constant source of debate. Like how long, how much damage are they doing to these different agencies? How long will it take to repair these things? Um, and I, I know from agency to agency, it's not, uh, obviously, there's unique uh, differences, but I think, um, broadly speaking, you give us a sense of that. So just give us a little bit of your background So from from what your uh, sort of, uh, from, from how you're making these assessments. Sure, sure. Uh, so, so I have uh, spent most of my professional career, at, at least in part as a civil rights lawyer, spending, uh, so my first job as a practicing lawyer was as part of the career civil service in the civil rights division of the Justice Department. Um, And so I had an opportunity to see the importance of the career staff uh, and the career professionals there. And then at the beginning of the Obama administration, I came back to the civil rights division as part of the political leadership team, trying to rebuild the division after what had happened during the Bush years, um, which, you know, gave me a chance to see well, uh, what an administration that is out to destroy civil rights enforcement can do, as the Bush administration tried to do, and then what it takes to rebuild, uh, as we tried to do in the Obama administration. And I worry that we're about to see a similar cycle starting again. So uh, in the in the mid 90s, you were there as a um, uh, as you were hired as a lawyer, but you came back under the Bush administration, I mean, excuse me, the Obama administration as a political appointee who was going to sort of rebuild this uh, the, this agency. I mean, how how much I mean, before we get into, you know, how they went about s- s- uh, systemically pulling apart this division of of the the Department of Justice. I mean, I, do you have a sense, and I imagine this is less of an academic sense, but more of, of one just by knowing people in similarly positioned, how, how, how similar your perspective on this, on what was happening in the Civil Rights Division, was relative to other agencies? Because when we see someone like uh, Pruitt, head of uh, the EPA, who seems to be put in there specifically to dismantle their agents. I mean, we, you know, there seems to be multiple examples of this. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a playbook that folks who want to destroy the good stuff government can do can, you know, use all over the government. Uh, you know, the the Civil Rights Division has always been kind of a, a central flashpoint. You know, it's, it's a place where if they're going to do this kind of thing anywhere, they're going to do it there. Um, but, you know, in the Bush administration, you had in EPA, maybe for the first part of the administration, a little bit less uh, of that because Christy Whitman and a relatively moderate right. head had been appointed. Um, but, uh, but I think one of the things that we're worried about with the Trump administration is it seems that every agency head who gets announced is more right-wing, more extreme than the last. And so we're not going to have any of the Christie Whitmans. Um, it's, it's pretty much going to be the playbook the Bush administration used on the Civil Rights Division everywhere in the government. All right. So give us a sense of just like how, when, when, I mean, as far as you can tell, I mean, some of the, the stuff that you wrote about um, the, how shell-shocked the attorneys were after eight years of Bush um, was pretty stunning. Just give us a sense of just sort of the personnel, you know, like who they put in, who stays um, and, and what happens to those who stay. I mean, it's just so weird to me. It's just hard for me to imagine the idea of like taking a job to undermine the enterprise that you've just taken a job with. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that's right. It, it, it is sort of difficult to fathom, uh, you know. So, so I think the the important background fact. I mean, you think about the Civil Rights Division; it's not that different than a lot of other government agencies. So there are about 
depending on when you're talking about, you know, 500, 600, 700 people who work there, about half of them are lawyers. Nearly all of the staff are career civil servants. So they're they're not people who are supposed to come and go with the administration. They're people who are supposed to be selected based on their professional qualifications through a non-political process, um, who are do, carrying out the mission of the agency. And then there's a top layer of you know, a few people, uh, really, you know, a, a dozen or so people, maybe less, who are political appointees who owe their jobs to the incumbent administration and come with it and leave with it. And and what what happened during the Bush administration, the, the George W. Bush administration, is a group of political appointees came in um, who were just who, who had an, a very clear agenda of trying to destroy the effectiveness of the civil rights division and try to subvert it. Um, they didn't believe in the work of the division. They didn't believe in enforcing voting rights. What the, they were very concerned with this sort of phantom of voter fraud, um, and so they they wanted to undermine voting rights enforcement. Um, they weren't particularly concerned with uh, employment discrimination or or housing discrimination. They were particularly uh, worried that uh, that the, the Civil Rights Division had extended too far in trying to attack um, kind of subtle and modern forms of bias. Uh, and so they came in and, and you know, they recognized that the, the big obstacle to making the radical changes they wanted were the professional career civil servants who were there to carry out the mission of the organization as created by Congress. And so they did a number of things. I mean, you know, they, they made life really, really difficult difficult for people who work there, um, transferring people to, with, without warning to jobs where they were basically doing nothing, basically, basically to try to make it such that uh, people would find it intolerable and would leave, um, you know, uh, being very personally abusive to a number of, of the staff. I mean, one of the things is so, so we found that during the course of the eight years of the George W. Bush administration, a very large percentage of the career staff left. And particularly, you know, not surprisingly, it was disproportionately the, the lawyers who had, you know, a decent amount of experience, like seven to 15 years of experience. Um, the statistic that that we often saw was between, I think, 2002 and 2006, um, the voting section, the sort of crucial section of the Civil Rights Division, uh, lost two-thirds of its attorneys, and they were disproportionately the folks who you know, had a lot of experience who you would rely on to handle the most important and sensitive matters. And they were replaced in a process that the Office of Inspector General and Office of Public Responsibility found later to be uh, improperly politicized. Um, they were replaced you by know, people. I, who, I remember now yeah. reading stories about this uh, during, this is all coming back to me, sadly, uh, as we talk, where they would bring in people from like, like Oral Roberts University or something like that. And it was all, there was a lot of, I remember reading about some of the interviews that had to do with just simply, uh, there was a lot of Christ talk with all due respect to uh, followers of Christ here, it was, which was odd, it seems to me. Yeah, I mean, so, so I think that w- what happened was there, there was definitely an effort that, that people made, who the, the Bush administration political appointees made, to try to turn the Civil Rights Division into a place where um, young conservative lawyers can go. And, and I'll say, look, you know, the, some, some of those lawyers, they came in, they were good, they knew, what they, were, they knew what they were doing, and when a new administration came in, they were willing to carry out what the new administration um, had set as priorities. Um, but a number of the folks were either folks who really couldn't get a job anywhere else. They just, they, they were not of a quality um, to get really good jobs doing really important legal work. Um, and, or even worse, they were folks who were out to undermine the goals of the division. They were, they were out to undermine voting rights enforcement. They were out to uh, subvert the traditional work of the division. And, and those folks, you know, so when, when the Obama administration came in, um, you know, there, these are folks who have civil service protection. 
Some of them, as I said, you know, actually did quite good work. Um, but many of them, either they just weren't capable of doing the kind of aggressive and important and complex work that you need to do, or they were really, you know, an internal fifth column. They were they were actively working to undermine what what the new administration was trying to do in carrying out the laws that Congress had passed. And you know, that was that that was a legacy that the George W. Bush uh, people knew that they were providing to the next administration. You know, it, it, this was not something that they just happened into. I mean, this was a very clear strategy. Hey, it's Sam Cedar. Why don't you uh, subscribe to this channel? You can do so right, uh, right over here. Uh, so over. Subscri subscribe.